What's up, Taiwan? I'm Ethan Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Many rice farms in Taiwan have struggled with the effects of climate change and water shortages. Some of those farms are now being encouraged to switch from cultivating rice to growing sorghum instead. The government hopes the measure will save water and cut labor costs. Sally Jensen has more details. Barren lands like this one in Miaoli County are becoming a common sight in northwestern Taiwan. This is in part due to water shortages, which is severely impacting rice farming communities. But Miaoli's rice farmers are now being presented with a new opportunity. The government is suggesting that instead, farmers use their lands to produce sorghum, a cereal used to make liquor. In recent years, droughts have become more severe across the country, largely due to climate change. For rice farmers, this is bad news. Cultivating rice uses a lot of water, which parts of Taiwan are currently short of. But farming sorghum uses only 20% of the water that's used for farming rice. And labor costs are also reduced to around 30%. The Council of Agriculture is offering subsidies of up to almost 2,500 US dollars per hectare for farmers who make the switch. However, some are still not sold on the idea. Miaoli's rice producers could face irrigation cutoffs in the coming years as the local government rushes to respond to water shortages. Though with the climate crisis turning up the heat, the authorities are hoping to convince farmers that the rewards could be big for those who go with the grain. As Naya Zhou and Sally Jensen for Taiwan Plus. A dispute has erupted between the government and Zhanghua locals over a proposed solar power demo site in the central Taiwan county. At a public hearing for the project, people were both for and against the idea. The demo site will cross five villages and cover over 800 acres of land. Some locals and environmental groups are worried that the installation of a solar farm will interfere with local agriculture. Taiwan's Energy Bureau says they have spoken with the local farmers association and say they will not force anyone to give up their private land for the project. But environmental groups aren't convinced. Some are calling for a review of the laws around land use before construction begins. Taiwan's Navy is welcoming a new domestically built stealth corvette to its fleet. The Shi Jiang is the third corvette of its class. Taiwan's military plans to build 11 of these ships as part of move to have a more mobile defense strategy. The corvettes are equipped with domestically made missile defense systems and are able to take out enemy ships sailing close to the country's coast. The Taiwan Space Agency is set to launch its first domestically built weather satellite. It's meant to provide more accurate meteorological data and could help predict typhoons. John Ventrist has more. Ready for liftoff. This is a replica of Triton, Taiwan's first homegrown weather satellite. Triton could be launched into orbit as early as next month. As the model shows, it's only one meter wide, but it's a big step forward for Taiwan's aerospace industry. Eighty-two percent of Triton's components and much of its technology were created right here in Taiwan. But this isn't just a matter of national pride. The weather data it will provide could help save lives. Taiwan already has other weather satellites. One cluster was launched in 2019, but Triton will be orbiting at an angle, giving it a different view of the world. This will allow meteorologists to gather a greater range of data. 
量测地面的反射，它可以去量土壤的湿度，或者是其实它也有去量海冰的状况。Triton is set to launch from a space center in France's South American territory, French Guiana. When it does, the satellite will give Taiwan a clearer picture of weather patterns and put a piece of Taiwanese tech into orbit. Damon Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. One Song is an orchestra that only plays Taiwanese classic songs in the form of Western classical music. The young orchestra aims to localize classical music and meanwhile internationalize Taiwanese culture. Yu Jing Huang revisits the sound of Spring Music Festival to see its latest efforts. A familiar melody to many karaoke lovers in Taiwan. It's the drum beat, an iconic song speaking of a wanderer's bitterness, working away from home. One Song Orchestra plays Taiwanese songs like this one, aiming to bring new life to classics. But it's not the only musical experiment the young orchestra is conducting. These musicians have broken away from a traditional performance space and joined the newly launched Sound of Spring Music Festival. It is currently being previewed and will open to the public in April. The music festival is an outdoor affair. Here in this forest, audience members can enjoy the music while also taking in Sinju's natural beauty. The event takes place in front of traditional Minnan architecture hidden in Sinju's mountains, a city in northern Taiwan primarily known for its tech hub. It's inspired by Britain's Glyndebourne Festival a world-famous event held outside a country mansion that allows event-goers to enjoy music while having a picnic. Today in Taiwan, is Musicians say the unique setting creates an entirely different experience for the audience. 人在感受各式各样的艺术表演的时候，跟整个环境都有关系。哦，当你在一个很舒服或很美丽的地方，其实我想心情都会跟着做改变。所以你在这样子的一个心情环境跟条件之下，欣赏音乐的时候，音乐所带给你的那个情感的那个传达也会很不一样。Presenting both Taiwanese and Western elements, the organizers hope to create a unique musical landscape that won't just resonate with local audiences. But also attract music lovers from overseas. Kamashi and Eugene Huang for Taiwan Plus. Central Taiwan's annual sheep run is back on again after a three year hiatus due to the pandemic. Bing Wang was there. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep. Before someone falls asleep, Get ready, the annual sheep run at Qingjing Farm in central Taiwan's Nanto County is about to get underway. The event was cancelled for three years because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but now it's back and hot to trot. The festival warms up with performances from local bands and vocalists. Then at 10.20, the main event begins. The flock of more than 100 sets out from the farm on a two-kilometer route that ends at the Qingjing National Hotel. Herders ensure that the sheep stay on the right path for the run, and that takes about half an hour. Not far behind, the road is rammed with thousands of supporters looking for good photo opportunities. So even if you're in a bad mood, all's wool the ends wool if you find yourself in Nanto. Klein Wong and Bing Wong for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images of an 85-year-old woman ziplining at 100 miles an hour in Wales, UK. I'm Ethan Take care and see you next time. <laughs>